Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. And special thanks to Evangel Ruel for sharing this. The video we're looking at today is with this guy from Christ the Good Shepherd Church. And when I looked for this online, it confirmed that this is definitely an extension of the Catholic Church. To be specific, part of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. So we shouldn't be surprised at this man-made teaching that we can't go to Jesus for forgiveness in the situation he's gonna speak of. Now, you may say, but I can go to Jesus directly. Why do I need a saint to take me to Jesus? Well, you can, but not always. For one simple fact, for as long as we live in the flesh, we sin. And the moment we sin, we are dead spiritually, totally separated from God. When I sin, I cannot go to Jesus Christ directly because that sin separated me from Him. So I need someone else's who is very close to Him, a saint living in paradise who cannot sin anymore. Therefore, He is truly living. Remember, he's Catholic and believes in the Trinity. So saying that anyone can intercede for us other than Jesus is heresy. Because we know there is one mediator between man and God, and that's Christ Jesus. And number two, when we sin as believers, we do not suddenly become spiritually dead and separated from God. Yes, our sin grieves the Holy Spirit, and it can quench the Holy Spirit. But when we are born again, the Holy Spirit enters us, and we're told in John 14, 16, that he'll be with us forever. But this just gets worse. Who is the dead? Me. Because as long as I'm in the flesh, I am susceptible to making mistakes. And whenever I make a mistake, I am dead spiritually. And what is the spiritual death? The total separation from God. My spirit becomes detached from God. This is the spiritual death, which is the eternal death. Wow, what a train wreck. Saying that when we sin, our spirits detach from God is a lie from hell and not supported by any Bible verse. And saying it's the eternal death means it's forever. If that was the case, then none of us would have any hope. So when I am a sinner, I cannot guarantee that I can always go to my Lord because sin is darkness and light is holiness. Christ is the light of the world. He is the holy of holies. I am not. So whenever I sin, I become darkness. I cannot go to the light because there is no communication or connection between light and darkness. And if you believe that, then you haven't read your Bible and are most likely, unfortunately, Catholic. When we sin as believers, as mentioned before, we grieve the Holy Spirit and may not experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit, such as joy, peace, patience, etc. Just one verse debunks this man's teaching. 1 John 1, 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we've got more good news in Lamentations 3.22, and that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. But this guy's lesson was completely whack. Please read the Bible for yourselves and realize that the twisted teachings in the Catholic Church probably outnumber the lies being taught in the New Apostolic Reformation. I live in the Philippines, and this country is about 85% Catholic. The sad thing is that whenever I ask a Catholic if they think they'd go to heaven when they die, almost all of them say the same thing. I don't know. Only God knows. But that's not what the Bible teaches. 1 John 5.13 tells us that we can know we have eternal life. So if you are unsure you'd go to heaven when you die, then please allow me to explain how you can have this assurance today. 
If you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? Fact is, we've all broken God's Ten Commandments, and breaking God's law is called sin. 1 John 3, 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Let's go through a few of those commandments. Ever told a lie? It only takes one to make someone a liar. Ever taken something that wasn't yours, even if it's small? That makes you a thief. Ever said, oh my God, or Jesus Christ in a moment of anger? That's called taking the Lord's name in vain. How about having a dirty thought? God is so perfect and holy that even thinking lustful things is considered adultery of the heart to him. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. The penalty for sin is death, and God's prison, so to speak, is hell, and it's forever. And just like in a court of law, a good judge cannot overlook someone's crime, God will not overlook ours. But also like in a court of law, if the fine is paid, the judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. If we died today and stood before God, we'd all be guilty of breaking his laws. That's where Jesus comes in. He lived a sinless life and took the death penalty on our behalf. So just like someone paying your fine in court, Jesus paid our fine to God with his life. John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him, that is, commits to Jesus, will not get what they deserve but shall have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8-9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ and not of works. There's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness. It's his gift to us. So if you aren't sure that you'd go to heaven today, then admit to God that you're sorry for breaking his laws. Admit that you deserve punishment for this and confess that you believe Jesus Christ has paid your fine on the cross. There's no special words, just be honest with God. He knows everything anyways. If you're sincere about that, then scripture says that you will become a new creation. The old you will be gone and the new will come. You will be born again and with God's spirit now living inside you, you're gonna notice some definite changes in your life. Don't wait another minute because no one is guaranteed they'll see tomorrow. We're gonna leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.